but this is one way on how you can use Tracy to track the opening of a specific file within a container image. Hello there and welcome back to the Aqua Security Open Source channel. My name is Anais, I'm the Open Source Developer Advocate here at Aqua. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure Tracy through Tracy policies. Tracy is a security runtime and forensic tool that uses eBPF. If you're completely new to eBPF, check out some of the videos on my own YouTube channel. The link is below in the description. Now this video is building upon our previous video here on the open source channel, where we installed Tracy inside of our Kubernetes cluster through the Tracy Helm chart. This video assumes that you have Tracy running inside of your Kubernetes cluster as part of a daemon set. Make sure that you have as many pods running inside of your Kubernetes cluster as you have nodes making up that cluster. Now this video is part of a larger series on Tracy. Every video as part of the series has a blog post that's published on my own blog site. If you prefer the written version for this tutorial, please check out the link below in the description to the blog. Tracy is part of the Aqua Security GitHub organization. You can find the repository pinned right in the top. Now, as part of the source code, you can find different ways on deploying Tracy, the documentation, as well as example policies in the example directory. Now, down below here in the readme, you can find the link to the documentation. In the previous video, we have installed Tracy through the Helm chart through the Kubernetes Quick Start. Do check that out if you haven't Tracy installed yet and you would just like to follow the documentation and you're already familiar with Helm. Now, this video is heavily based on the tutorial working with Tracy's policies on Kubernetes. However, we did some adaptation. If you're on the documentation, make sure you are always on the latest version. Now, this tutorial is focusing specifically on the Tracy events as well as Tracy policy section. Once you've installed Tracy inside of your Kubernetes cluster, it will come with a set of default events loaded. Now, we generally differentiate between built-in events as well as custom events. Built-in events include system calls, network events, behavioral signatures, and extra events. Let's take a look at all of them. System calls specify system calls that are happening across your cluster. So you can track different processes, different system calls that are invoked by or triggered by different resources across your cluster. The network events, here's our set of network events, how to use them. Behavioral signatures are basically advanced events that track advanced behavioral patterns um, that could basically indicate security risk or malicious activity across your cluster. So do check that out if you're curious about our behavioral signatures. And then we have extra events. Now Tracy is loaded with these extra events in your cluster. You can find all of the events that are currently loaded in the Tracy config map. And we're going to see in a second how you can um, query the Tracy config map from your cluster. And then we have custom events that we're not going to look into much detail in this video. You can basically write custom events in Go and Rego uh, based on the kind of events that your organization would like to track. With Tracy, we have put a lot of effort into replicating the existing user experience that you might already be familiar with from other cloud native and Kubernetes based applications. So basically, whenever you're modifying Tracy events, you're modifying the Tracy config map. Tracy events specify how Tracy should respond to different events within your cluster. Here's an example of a Tracy config map or Tracy policy within the Tracy config map. So as part of the Tracy policy, we specify the scope. So basically the resources that this policy applies to. And then the rules, the rules specify the different events that fall within that scope. Basically that Tracy is supposed to track under this resource, under this scope. You can find a list of different scopes right here in the documentation. Now, how you can you specify different rules? Within the rules section, you specify the event and you can specify different filters for that event. For example, and we will see that in a second, if you want to specify specific files and if they are open, that the event is going to be triggered, you can set that as a filter. So here you can see several different examples on how you can apply filters to different events. So at this point, when you're following the tutorial, you should have a running Kubernetes cluster 
and you should have a tracy system namespace and okay, all in namespace tracy system and you should have within the tracy system a daemon set running for tracy and you should have as many parts within your cluster as you have nodes corresponding and running that cluster. This is where sh you should be at right now. Now, I can query the logs within that pod, for example. kubectl logs in this pod in namespace tracy system. And I see just here a basic warning message that I get on Azure. Uh, otherwise, there are no logs yet uh, because there's basically no activity being detected as part of the default events inside of my cluster. So how can I actually access the default events that are loaded upon my, me having Tracy installed as a default? Well, I can query the config map called Tracy policies that has all of the default events installed and I can output it as YAML. So here is the YAML manifest for the config map. And here are all of my default events as part of the signatures YAML manifest. Here's my Tracy policy that's loaded right now in this config map. You can load up to 64 independent uh, policies into that config map. Now here you can see all of the default events that are part of our extra events described in the documentation that are loaded by default as part of Tracy inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Meaning if any of these events are detected by Tracy, it will lock that activity. And the scope is global, meaning it's across your entire Kubernetes cluster. Now we want to edit this config map. So I'm going to copy paste this config map into a separate file. Now I'm going to paste that default config map inside of a separate file. Now you can edit that config map also directly within your cluster. I just prefer copy pasting it. So I have it as a file to see what changes I made outside of the cluster. And then you can either remove the existing config map completely if you prefer or you can add an additional file uh, for new policies so we're going to call this um, example example policy dot yaml and we are going to paste this and now we can add our example policy right here now I'm just going to copy paste the first part of the existing signatures YAML file. In this case, you could also copy paste the entire example policy directly from the blog post where I've listed it or from this repository that's also linked below in the description. Now here we have the Tracy policy that's kind um, of our ex API extension of our custom resource definition in Kubernetes. So you can't change these parts, but you can change the metadata and you should change the metadata as these can't be named the same. So we want to have uh, file open events and that's how we're going to call it. Description traces um, engine X being opened. So in this case, I'm going to show you an example of how you can track um, a file being opened. Uh, within a container. So the scope is going to be container and then the event is going to be open. That's going to be the, the system call uh, that we want to track. And then we want to af apply a filter as well. Now the filters is actually going to be the file name that I want to track. So in this case, I want to track whenever basically Nginx is going to be opened. I want it to produce an event or basically that event has to be tracked by Tracy. So this is all this policy does whenever the Nginx application is opened, then it will basically log that activity through Tracy. And this is the well, the additional Tracy policy that I want to apply uh, to my cluster. So, and now I'm going to apply this policy, this config map. So I say kubectl, kubectl apply file, and it's the config map. And I want to apply it to the namespace Tracy system. And here is my Tracy policies configured 
um, with the additional changes. Now, in my case, I already have in my cluster a demo namespace and within the demo namespace, I have an Nginx deployment running. Now, right now, when I track um, or when I look at the logs from Tracy, I can't see any additional logs, like only the default logs that I've showed you earlier, those warnings. Otherwise, in the past minute, past five minutes, there are not any logs. Same with the other part, there are no logs. Only the, again, only the default logs that we've seen earlier. Now I'm gonna port forward this demo application to localhost 8080. Let me open this application and produce, let's say four different events, three. However, this was however many this was. So I've basically opened this file that I've specified as part of my config map. So this file right here, this HTML file within the container image uh, that's running in my nginx part um, has been opened several times just now. So this should have triggered an event through Tracy. So let's check the Tracy logs and fingers crossed the demo got them with me. So we're going to go back to Tracy and we're going to look at the logs. Oh, so in this part, this part didn't log any logs. Let's check the other one. Uh, didn't trigger anything because here's the caveat. We have to actually reload the daemon set. So whenever you change the config map, make sure that you restart the rollout for the daemon set. Only if you do that, then the new policies that you've specified within the config map for Tracy will actually also be loaded within your Kubernetes cluster. So we just restarted the daemon set. We can check basically in a Tracy system namespace that both containers for Tracy, both parts have been restarted. So let's wait until these are both running properly. So we can check the logs. Again, we only see the warning logs. Both of them only see the warning logs. Now let's port forward the demo application again. So we are going to open again the file that we are tracking through Tracy policies. And we're going to reload this several times, the application, and then we're going to check our logs again. Let's check these logs. And ah, here we see our different events. So let's check out what happened here. We can see here, this is the, let's check this one. This is the first one or the second one. So the process ID zero. Um, can it, here is the event name open. And this event name is the same as the syscall name, which is also open. Here we can see it says syscall. And um, it's based on this application has been opened. This is the filter, the value that has been applied. So as you can see, we can now track when somebody is opening our application or this particular file. And this is just a basic example on how you can track if any file, any specific file within any of your containers, for example, a file that has sensitive data is being opened. Now, that doesn't mean you should include sensitive data in your container images and within your cluster um, <laughs> is directly readable, but this is one way on how you can use Tracy to track the opening of a specific file within a container image, which is really exciting. I find it really exciting. <laughs> As always, all of the resources used in this video are linked below in the description. This includes the blog post, the documentation on Tracy events as well as Tracy policies, the tutorial on modifying the Tracy config map, as well as the link to the previous video on installing Tracy through the Helm chart. If you enjoy using Tracy, it would mean a lot to myself as well as to all of the contributors who make Tracy possible if you can give us a star on GitHub. I really hope to see you in one of our next videos to make sure that more people see our content, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming videos. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.